Welcome back to RetroCAD. Today we're doing our first in a series of three videos about AutoCAD version 2. Today we're going to talk about version 2.01, then we'll do a video on AutoCAD version 2.5, and we'll follow that up with a third video about AutoCAD 2.62. Each one has all kinds of new cool features, so I'm really looking forward to going through these. Let's take a look. AutoCAD 2.1 was released in May of 1985 and is referred to as the sixth release of AutoCAD. With it came an updated file format and a number of new features, such as the ability to save a drawing without exiting the program. Other new features included isometric crosshairs, named views, and the ability to create slides which could subsequently be used for presentation and reference. All right, let's get into this exploration of AutoCAD version two. We are running on my custom built NUXT machine. This is a XT class machine. It's running an NEC V20 processor at nine megahertz. Uh, it uses a compact flash hard drive, quote unquote hard drive. So it's a, a CF card. Uh, right now I've got just 400 bytes shy of 640K free, thanks to some excellent memory management. So let's get into AutoCAD version two. This main menu is pretty much the same as it was in version one. Uh, there are a few extra choices for graphics cards, but really nothing too different. So let's load up one of the default drawings that comes with AutoCAD. This is the stair drawing, which is a stair detail. All right, with that loaded up, the first thing I want to demonstrate to you is the O snaps, which is super exciting to me. And I picked the wrong menu here. Let's go to draw. We're going to draw a line and we are going to bring up the O snap menu and look at these guys. This was totally mind blowing. Having gotten used to drawing without them in the last version, this is super great to see. So now when we pick endpoint, we actually have an aperture box around, you know, our, our cursor. So we can go in and pick right on the endpoint. It looks like it got this endpoint. So let's go out and pick another one. And then we've also got perpendicular. Yay. And all the rest. So personally, that's the feature I'm the most excited to see in here. I'm going to erase these objects and you'll notice I don't get a pick box for doing that. This is, we're still in the land where we've got a pick near a thing and believe that it was selected. So you just gotta, just gotta believe sometimes. Moving on, we're going to look at the layer command. Uh, the layer command works a lot like it did before. Uh, you hit question mark. Of course, it's non-graphical back at this time. So here's our list of layer names and we can go create a new layer and now we're able to name layers whatever we want to. So we can make a chair layer. Also, here and in other parts of the program, AutoCAD is now recognizing the standard color name. So instead of having to type one, you could type red. And of course, we are working in monochrome. So who knows, you know, how useful this feature was at the time. If you look back on the AutoCAD version one video, you can see how much worse the resolution was when you would uh, work in a color mode. So it remains to be seen, but I suppose there's probably people who were drawing, you know, with the, the belief that color would come to the program eventually. So we're going to go back to our last menu here and we're going to take a stop in at the style command. Uh, the style command works kind of like it always has, and we'll just make some uh, new text style. We'll choose the TXT font. Height width factor is new, so you can now make double wide text, or uh, we'll make like 1.5 width. Obliquing angle is brand new. We could make any font italic, essentially, backwards and upside down, so we could have fully mirrored text. That's new. So let's just go in and draw a piece of text. We'll put it here, we'll make it this tall. 
rotation angle. And when we're typing it in, let's uh, let's do percent percent U, which many CAD users will know, causes it to be underlined, which is a brand new feature here in AutoCAD version two. Underline text and overscore text was totally new to this. All right, we're gonna stop in at another text-based command, which is Qtext. It's a toggle, you can turn it on or off. So we're gonna turn it on and then do a regen. And the thing that we'll notice is different is all of our text comes up as a double stroked line, kind of like a double line. And in the next version of AutoCAD 2.5, this gets changed into a box. But in this version, it's two lines. And I'm imagining that they changed it because, you know, when you have a lot of text, like in a paragraph format, it probably got difficult to tell which line was part of which text, like if you were gonna do some text editing in this mode. So let's just turn our Qtext back off and we'll do a regen. I'm gonna zoom up a little closer on an area here. And I'm gonna show you the pan command, which unlike in AutoCAD version one, is fixed now and works the right way. So you pick where on your drawing you want to move and then where you want that spot to be afterwards. And it was reversed in the last version, which gets really hard to understand. All right, let's draw a few lines to do one of my favorite things. We're going to work with the array command because here array does uh, a new trick. So we'll pick our three lines. We'll do a circular array, which these days is the polar array. Pick a center, angle between lines, let's say 12. We'll do 15 objects. Rotate objects as they're copied. This is brand new. Yes, very nice. Personally, I never get tired of doing this spirograph thing with AutoCAD. It's just extremely fun for me. And 30 years later, it continues to be so. All right, let's erase some of our things here and we'll draw some new things. We're gonna draw some lines here and close that. And then we're gonna use the area command. Before we do that, let's use the osnap command to create a running osnap for endpoint. Then we'll use the area command and we'll just go around and pick the endpoints of our shape. And new command here, or new result of the command is the perimeter. That's new to AutoCAD 2. Very cool to see. Another thing that's new is a more complete result from the list command. List now shows the delta x, y, and the angle, which previously it did not. So that is useful. Speaking of useful, there is now a save command. Previously, you could only save by using the end command, which would also close AutoCAD. Very inconvenient. All right, another thing that we can do in here, speaking of saving type of things, is we can create slides. Slides are a temporary view that gets saved and then can be recalled to the screen. So we're gonna just create a slide here and let's just call it uh, close. So we've got this close view and now we're gonna zoom extents here. And uh, in fact, let's zoom to a, a whole different part of the drawing. So it's just graphically different. Oh, still got my O snap on. All right, so we're over here. We've created a slide called close, and now we're gonna view it by using the V slide command. And we'll type close, and we get that previous view loaded to the screen. Now these entities aren't really there, and they can't be picked or modified, and they'll all go away if we do a redraw or a regen. But the reason that you would use this is it allowed you to save a view, which you could use yourself, like for reference, or, something I got into quite a bit in my early days of this, doing client demonstrations. You do like a presentation, so you would save a bunch of slides and then use the script functionality to automate showing those slides to the screen. 
Now, I will admit that there were some customers who really enjoyed watching a CAD operator do all of the things that modified the drawing, zooming around and so on. But often that became time consuming and kind of a distraction from the material. So the slides were very useful for that. Now, as AutoCAD moved on, slides showed up in another way for block libraries. And those who've worked with older versions of AutoCAD will probably be familiar with that. I'm not gonna get into it here. I'm sure we'll get into it in another future video. So let's go back to the root menu here. There's a couple more things to look at. Uh, one that I just wanted to show quick is when I'm drawing a line, you get this rubber band here and the F6 command toggles your coordinates at the top of the screen. And a new feature here in AutoCAD version two is this coordinate display where it shows the distance and the angle that your cursor is relative to the first position. So that was pretty cool. Next up, we've got a new dimensioning command and that is angular dimensions. We're gonna dimension this line. Oh, oh, I'm picking on the slide. So let's just do a redraw and get that slide to go away. There you go, there's a demonstration of how that works. And I just wanna change my view here quick to, I'm still in the dim command, to, and I don't know, I, I just wanna point this out. Dim used to be its completely own prompt, like you see here. Baffling, so you gotta get out of that. And now we're just gonna zoom previous, and we're gonna go zoom up on a, angled line. And before I do that, I'm just going to turn my O snap off, set it back to, I think we just type none here. There we go. And let's just zoom up on, yeah. Cool. And we should be able to angular dimension this even with its endpoints off of the screen. And you know, now I'm kind of kicking myself for turning that O snap off because I'm going to need it. There we go. Let's do an angular dimension. Ah, it doesn't work because we're not in the dim prompt. So now we can type ang from there. Google. Pick our two endpoints. And it's not finding them. I wonder if it's because they're off the screen. Let's just draw a new line and dimension it. Dim. Ang. Getting bogged down here. All right, from here. Oh my gosh. It's not asking to pick the endpoints of a line. It's asking to pick an angle. And those of you who are shouting at your screen probably saw that already, but here you go. So here's our first line, here's our second line. Our dimension arc goes here. It's 43. The text location is gonna be here. Brilliant. Wow. Gotta pay attention. I was thinking more of like a rotated dimension, but also diameter and radius are new in this version as dimension types. All right, a just a couple more things I wanna cover so this video doesn't get as long as the version one did. Uh, there is now a mirror command. So we can choose objects. Let's see if dims mirror just for kicks. We can pick a mirror line. And of course we can use ortho to control that line. We'll just make it straight down. Delete the old objects, no. And it mirrored, but it did not mirror the dimension, interestingly. It looks like it mirrored something here and just out of total curiosity, I'm gonna zoom up and see if I can see what that is. It did mirror. Oh, that's the 43 degrees. So it looks like I picked the arrow, but I didn't pick the arc because of course zooms, or rather dimensions, were not all one object. So they didn't have associative dimensioning at this point. The dimension would actually be as many different objects as it took to draw that dimension. All right, and our last command I wanna cover here is attributes. I'm not gonna get into a big block inserting party, but I just wanna show you that this is in here now. You can define an attribute with pretty much all the stuff that you'd expect to see there 
from this early version of attributing. That is going to cover what I want to show off here in uh, version two. Of course, at the top, maybe just to talk about the interface for a moment, the layer shows that we're on layer four. The fill mode is on, the snap mode is on, ortho shows up there. So that's about it. If there's anything else you have questions about or you want me to cover, um, I'm going to be looking at the other the other two version twos because I have three different uh, AutoCAD version twos. So please go ahead and comment. Uh, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at retro underscore CAD. And with that, we're going to wrap up this video. Wow, that was cool. If you've watched my video about AutoCAD 1.4, you know how much I struggled to draw without O-snaps. So it's super cool to have those back. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment telling me exactly what you thought about it. Like, subscribe, all those cool YouTube things and tell a friend who might be interested in RetroCAD. That's it for now. Thanks again for watching. See ya.